The secret to running longer, running faster is not only how you work out. The secret is how you recover. It's not during the workout that your body is getting stronger. No, that's happening between workouts. Proper recovery, proper rest is the most underrated aspect of running. But how do you recover properly? Today, we're discussing how to maximize recovery during your rest period so that you gain the most out of your hard workouts. Hi, Simon here. Welcome to my channel. I've been racing 100 mile ultra marathon every month for two years and a half now. And this channel is meant to share my experience to improve your running so that you can enjoy trail and ultra running. And I think it's important to highlight that I'm not an elite runner. I'm just a normal guy with an average job, a busy life, and running is really just a hobby. So the tips that I'm providing on this channel are meant to be accessible. They're meant for you. And today we're discussing one of the most important things that I've learned through my experience ultra running, which is rest and recovery is severely underrated. They never rest, they're never sleeping, they're always working out hard. Great if it's working for them, that's definitely not working for me. That's a great way to get injured and also that's not the best way to maximize the gain from my workout. That's not how I progressed the best. My best progress came when I was taking training seriously, but also recovery seriously, because you need both. It's pretty obvious when you think about it, it's not in the middle of a hard workout that your body is getting stronger. No, the hard workout will be a stimulus to your body to build your muscles stronger. It's after the workout that this is happening. It's during the night, it's during these hours when you're not stressing your body, but instead providing nutrients and providing time for your body to build itself back up. But how do you maximize recovery? Because obviously I'm also not saying that you should only rest. You need these hard workout and you need recovery. So how do you find the balance between training too hard, potentially injuring yourself and not giving yourself time to actually build your body stronger or taking too much rest and really just not progressing? That's something that will come from you. That's something that you will need to experiment. But what will make the difference well, first, obviously, it's between individual, different genetic and everything like that, or also simply where are you in your fitness journey. But even yourself, this is something that can change through times. Probably when you were younger, you could have worked harder and recover quicker. And that's also something that I think maybe is affecting the perception of how important rest is. We look a lot at athletes, top performer, and I'm sure that they are able to push their body to an extreme that you and I cannot do that. You and I need more time to recover and the balance is just simply different, but we're just normal people. Nobody talks about us. So let me share my experience with you. So the way I'm going to structure the discussion is I'm going to start with things that are a little bit more urgent. This is something you should do basically right after your workout up to things that are way less urgent and are more general. So for example, how you should think about your training plan. I do have a video about how to build your training plan, which I suggest you have a look. I go into the specific of how you should structure your day-to-day -day, uh, schedules. But today we're going to talk about it in a more general perspective, how to go through different cycles, even how to go through different cycles in terms of a season, the down season or the racing season. 100 miles. First we get Simon Girard in from Pearls. No, it's Simon. So the first thing after a big workout or a race, you're going to be exhausted. You're going to be out of breath. So take care of your body short term. What that means is sit down, rest, get that heart rate lower. What you can do to help with that, especially if it's a high intensity workout is instead of just running intervals and then you go to bed, do a cool down period where you're shuffling a little bit that will help bring your heart rate lower but in a progressive matter, that will be a little bit less rough for your body. Jug, jug, jug. Now you're sitting down, you're not out of breath anymore. One of the first thing that you should be careful about is that we sweat a lot when we run. And in particular, if it's hot, I think for me, the biggest danger of being dehydrated and not noticing is not necessarily when it's hot and humid and I'm all sweaty and no, that's pretty obvious. And then I'll drink automatically. 
it's more dangerous when, well, of course, when I was in bad water and it was 127 degree. Yeah, okay, that's a dangerous place. And, and, and you're drying so quickly that you don't actually feel sweaty. But the other one that is pretty tricky is when you're at altitude, we sweat a lot, but because of the altitude, the water evaporates very quickly. So we don't necessarily notice. And that's one of the factors that will contribute to a huge headache. So the guidance here is that you should drink plenty after a run, even if you're not thirsty. Worst case scenario, you're just gonna pee it out. And peeing is actually one of the first factors that you should look at. First, have you been peeing during your workout or after your workout? If so, what was the color? And the color can range from, it's basically water, which means you're perfectly hydrated, it's totally no problem, all the way to Coke, which is a different situation that probably means you have rhabdo, you might wanna go to the hospital, that's an emergency situation. But if we're talking about a more normal situation, it can go to very dark yellow. Very dark yellow means you just need to drink right now. And this is something that is not urgent, but it's one of the first things that you need to resolve. And another thing that we hear a lot related to that when it comes to marathon and ultra marathon training are electrolytes. Electrolytes, salt, these are used as synonym in the real world, that's fine. When you sweat, you also lose salt, sodium, electrolyte too, you'll lose magnesium, for example, and you need to replenish them. The reality though, is that for 95% of the time, you don't go in such severe disbalance that you actually need a supplement, but it doesn't hurt, just like the water, if you take a little bit more salt after a workout, you're just gonna pee it out if it's too much. So what I would recommend is instead of drinking pure water, you should probably take something that has electrolyte. But even better than just water with electrolyte, you should probably have a sport drink. Hawaiian pizza. So why am I mentioning sugar? Well, when you're exercising, you're burning calories, right? And if you're curious about how to actually fuel during your workout, I have a video about that that I think is very helpful, especially if you go into long distance running, marathon, ultra marathon, that's very important. But today we're talking about what about afterwards? We're trying to get our body back to what it was before. And we've burned energy, so we should try to replenish that. When you exercise, energy will come from two different types of molecule that you're metabolizing. It will be from carbohydrate and it will be from fat. Fat burn much slower, but we have obviously a lot of reserve in terms of energy. Whereas carbohydrate, we can burn that much quicker. So the faster we run, proportionally, the more we will burn carbohydrate as opposed to fat. And the problem with carbohydrate is that we don't have infinite supply of that. We store that as glycogen, mostly in our liver and in our muscles. So after a strenuous workout, you've depleted part or totally your glycogen. And some of the energy might also come from nutrition, but that's beside the point. The point is that you've burned a significant amount of your glycogen reserve, which you need to replenish to be able to go as hard the next day. As for the fat, you don't need to replenish that necessarily. We have plenty left, but the glycogen itself if you would be depleting that and you don't eat sufficiently to cover for that loss, the next workout that you will have, you'll be a little sluggish because you don't have access to that fast energy. You need to rely much more on fueling and on your fat. And a bit of a tangent here is you've probably heard about carb loading. I might discuss about that later, but the whole concept of carb loading is to increase the amount of glycogen that you're storing. Now, are we actually able to do that by having a meal of spaghetti the night before a run? No. Is it possible to try and work on that a little bit? Maybe. But what is for sure is that if you've depleted your glycogen, you need to replenish that. It's still about nutrition, and it's still something that you should try to do fairly quickly, and it's to consume proteins. What I do myself is Within 45 minutes after a big workout, so a long run or a race or a strength session, I'm gonna take a smoothie with one scoop of protein. The need for more protein doesn't stop there, especially you know after a race with something that is especially hard. Try to think about the meals that you will have afterwards 
and try to include a fair amount of protein because it will take more time to build back your muscle. And that's something that could take several days if it was a very intense or very aggressive workout. And typically that would be a race. Before we dive any deeper, if you appreciate this video, if you think this is helpful, please leave a thumbs up and share it with other runners that you think could benefit from these advice. This is helping my channel grow, so thank you so much. Now we move to rest. And rest means not working out. Rest means that you're not gonna exert yourself intensely. And first is the short term, of course, after a long run, don't run again. But also think about the next day, the workout that you have after that. Or if you have, for example, an interval session, you need the rest afterwards. So scheduling a strength session right after that is probably not the best time. What would be a better use of your time instead is to try to sleep a little more. And I'm sure a lot of you have experienced that before. If you go for a long run, sometimes you get very sleepy afterwards. And we want to fight that. But I think it's pretty clear that it's our body saying like, dude, chill the f out. I need to build back your legs right now. And zoop, you fall asleep. And that's good. That's basically, think about road construction. The fastest way to build back a road is to close it for cars. And that's kind of what you're doing when you're sleeping. So sometimes for myself, even after a race, I will sleep more for a few days. And sometimes I do it on purpose and, and, and it's not being lazy. It's about doing what's the priority right now. And the priority is that you're in a phase of recovery. And that's something that for me, the extra sleep will be about a week if I can. When it comes to rest, after a hard workout, it's actually kind of a little bit why we want to do back-to-back -back long run is to actually say, no, you don't get that rest. That's actually what's hard about doing a back-to-back -back long run is that you would have needed that rest. But after a race, what I do myself is for a full week, I will not have actual workout, but active recovery is totally fine. And you should consider, should you take some days off to not work out at all and how many? And I think you need to listen to your body here. For me, I try to have at least one day of rest every week when I'm training and that's sufficient for me, but maybe you need more than that and listen to yourself. There's really no point of pushing your body too much in training if you're not able to recover. And the way to see if you're not recovering properly is look at what you're capable of doing. And if your running seems to be stagnant, your performance, either speed or distance, it could be that you're not providing your body enough rest to recover. But we fall back to the same dilemma of too much rest or too little rest. The way I tried to implement that as part of my training, well, that was more when I was not racing as much, but it was to have cycle of three weeks block of higher workout and one week that was dedicated to resting more. The way I was dividing that was full mileage, half mileage, but you can do it differently. And these blocks are kind of the, the time that you push your body and you push your limit and you have one week to build yourself back up. And that's how I got the best progress in terms of my fitness. And if we think at the more macro level, you can think about that also for your whole season. Preparing for a race doesn't take a full year. You can work on a training plan that will be something like three, four months, depending where you are in your kind of resting period. So for example, in winter, you can have lower mileage. You could focus on different sports like skiing. And when the season comes, that's where you start stepping up a little bit on the mileage. That will help your body be better prepared. And quite frankly, it takes a lot of time to prepare for these races. So having a season, a down season can help you focus on other aspects of your life. I've mentioned, for example, you could go skiing, but it's spending time with family, traveling, all of these beautiful things. The other thing that you can do is that you still have your racing season, then you have your training season for that. And before that, you don't need to be at peak mileage all the time. You could focus on something else. And this is the period, for example, that some people will focus on losing weight because it's extremely difficult to push your limit at the peak of mileage, your highest peak of mileage, but also be cutting on calories. The workout that you will have, if you're trying to lose weight, your workout will not be as good. That's, that's just a fact. So if you're trying to cut down on weight, you can do that in the off season. That's probably the best time to do that. 
And then once the season starts, of course, you still watch nutrition, but instead of being in calorie deficit, what you do is that you're calorie neutral and you're focusing not on losing weight, but rather on gaining in your fitness. Recovery is an integral part of your training, of your fitness journey. You have your workout and you have your recovery. If you want to maximize the gain from your hard workout, you need proper rest, you need proper nutrition, and you need proper recovery. It's not being lazy to take rest, it's being smart. It's understanding that you're not a superhuman and that your body needs time and needs the tool to build itself. In next week's video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share the specific step that I'm taking after an ultra marathon. I'm gonna be very specific about what I do and what my body goes through. And the way I'll do that is I'll use Zion 100 mile, which I'm racing this weekend. As an example, I'll describe what my body goes through day to day and what I've been doing to try and cope with that. I have no clue how it's gonna come out, but hopefully it will be interesting. If you appreciate this video, please leave a thumbs up and share it with other runners that you think would benefit from these advice about recovery. In the comments below, I'm curious to hear what do you do to maximize your recovery? How do you rest so that you're prepared to go for your next workout or your next race? Finally, a question that I often have is what's the gear that I use when I'm trail and ultra running? I've made some videos about that, but also I've made a list where you can have all of the gear, but also all of the nutrition that I use as part of my recovery so that you can order the same. I'll put the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching.